Paul Fear with the State Good Saturday. morning. We are now on the video record. Today is Monday, November 3rd, 2014, uh, at 9.02 a.m. We are here at the offices of Hurray and Wallace and Higgins in Key West, Florida, for the purpose of taking the video deposition of Gary Lee LeVay, taken by the plaintiff in case number 14-10028. The case is Trevor Imers versus City of Key West et al. It's a U.S. District Court case filed in the Southern District of Florida. Uh, the court reporter is Suzanne X of U.S. Legal Support. The videographer is Roger Pratt, also of U.S. Legal Support. Would all counsel please state their appearance for the record and then I will swear in the witness. My name is David Brill. I represent the Imers family. Jeanette Lewis, I represent the Imers family. Darren Horan, represent the Imers family. Bob McKee, I represent the Imers family. David Paul Horan, I represent the Imers family. Lyman Reynolds, I represent uh, Officer LeVay. Michael Burke, I represent the defendants, City of Key West, Gabriel Garrido, Matthew Johnson, Thad Calvert, Todd Stevens, Derek Wallace, Nicholas Galbo, Kathy Ann Wansiak, Gustavo Medina, Henry Del Valle. That should be enough. Would you raise your right hand, please, sir? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're giving in this cause will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. LeVay, I uh, had sent an email to counsel of record for the defense asking that no deponent individual officer bring a firearm to the deposition. Uh, you understood that, correct? Yes, sir. But you did so anyway? I'm on duty, yes, sir. Uh -huh. You're on duty as we have a civil deposition in yes, this sir. case? Yes, sir. You're getting paid by the city? Yes, I am. Um, nonetheless, it requires you in this deposition where we, frankly, do not trust your ability to remain calm and composed and not lose your temper uh, and therefore have a concern that you will brandish your firearm to us that you think it's appropriate to have your firearm today despite our request? I'm here to protect you as well as myself. Who are you protecting me from? Any crime that may be committed. By whom? I don't know. What was the point of bringing the firearm today? Because I'm on duty. None of the other officers besides, and Sergeant Levette is on duty, or Sergeant uh, Zamora is on duty as well? Yes, sir. None of the other officers here are on duty? They're on duty. But they're not dressed in their uniform? No, sir, they're not. And they don't have their firearm? No, sir, they don't. But the difference is that you're being deposed today? Yes, sir. Okay, so they're here, attending the deposition, on duty, but they're not in uniform and they don't have their firearms? No, sir, I don't believe they do. Well, I mean, it's not I don't believe. We can see them with our own eyes, can't we? So again, I reiterate the question. Why is it you think it necessary to wear your uniform and have your firearm when you're on duty the same way those three are in, on duty? Objection form, argumentative, attempting to intimidate the witness. I don't have the firearm. I'm not the one intimidating. Move to strike inappropriate comment of counsel. It's not inappropriate. I want to know why you felt it necessary to come despite our request with no response by any defense counsel to the contrary that it would not be acceded to, that it would not respect our request, that you thought it necessary to wear a firearm. Again, objection, asked and answered. If you want to take his deposition, please proceed. Why are they not in uniform and you are? Objection, argumentative, inappropriate. Do you want to cancel form, the deposition if you're intimidated counsel. and want to cancel I, the deposition? I, I'm, I'm dis dis disappointed at least. I'm apprehensive at worst. And I'm not the only one in this room that feels that way. And it would have been appropriate to give a heads up. We I asked for it. Let's call the judge. Wait, I, I the tried judge. to call the judge. We'll call him again. But let's put it on the record. Yep. We want the judge involved with a man who came, even though we requested him to be unarmed, when he's here with his fellow officers and there's not a single person in this room that's a hazard to him in any way. As the witness has testified, he's on duty, he's an armed police officer, and there is no reason for him not to be armed. He is not in any way acted or in any way intimidated uh, plaintiff's counsel, and uh, he's here to provide his deposition in a civil matter. I disagree. He's a very large man with history. C counsel, if, are you taking the deposition? Now he's I mean, on the phone trying to get the judge. So move to strike following. inappropriate continued counsel uh, statements in this case. We now have two attorneys for the plaintiff. Actually, we have five. five. I feel threatened by him, and I'm speaking up. And well, I then you can leave. No. 
Okay. I'm here because this man did something to my client, and I'm here for that reason. I don't like the fact that after we ask him to be here without a weapon, he shows up with a weapon. I don't like that. I think the federal judge should know about it. That's all I'm saying. And for the record, I tried calling a second time. It is now 9.08 a.m. It continues to go to voicemail. We will continue to try. What is the problem with you putting your firearm in a locked device right now? I'm on duty, sir. This is not a secure facility. <laughs> What's going to happen here? The three officers felt completely comfortable. You don't? No, sir. I don't have a firearm. Bob doesn't have a firearm. Darren doesn't have a firearm. Jeanette, David, we're all here unarmed. Again, the officers answer the question. If you want to proceed with the civil deposition, I, please do I so. didn't get an answer to my question about why the distinction between you being in uniform today on duty and three of your fellow officers who you have identified here as being on duty as well are not in uniform. This witness cannot testify for them. You have their Listen, depositions. Counsel, I'm not going to ask you repeatedly throughout the day. You make a form objection. That's a legitimate question. You want to tell them not to answer, tell them not to answer. I didn't ask your testimony. I've asked Officer LeVay's. I move again to strike you your You can move to strike. I'm counsel. asking him the question. You're arguing with the witness. I've and, asked three times the same question. I haven't gotten an answer. To the best of his ability, you have I haven't got, I've gotten your answer. I appreciate your testimony. You're not a sworn witness, Lyman. He is. I want to know if he can tell us why it is that you, sir, Mr. LeVay, are in uniform and these three other officers who are likewise on duty are not. Is that a difficult question for you? I, just I don't know why they're not in uniform. Is there a policy that says that you have to be in uniform when on duty? Yes. So all three of your fellow officers are violating that particular policy? If they've had an order not from me or not from a superior officer, then yeah, they would be. Now, these same fellow officers appear to have, uh, for lack of a better term, thrown you to the bus, haven't they? You know, what we're, we're going to go ahead and have Judge Goodman. I think we should wait until Judge Goodman can take our call. Listen, this is what you want to do. We can just go ahead and I'm, wait, I'm and he can proceed. Asking if ask questions. Or I'm asking the questions. Well, counsel. then ask questions. Okay, you are also not representing him. You've done I'm not representing counsel. him, but so then just remain quiet with it. Let me ask my questions. Are you finished? Um, no, I have. You actually interrupted me twice now. Did your fellow officers throw you to the wolves in the representation of the, your defense of this case? No, yes, sir. Sir. Well, every other uh, uh, defendant that has been named and sued in this lawsuit as an individual officer defendant are represented by this counsel here, Mr. Michael Burke. You are not. You're by yourself. Why is that? He's not by himself. He's represented by me, counsel. I've made my appearance on his No, behalf. I understand that. Yes, represented by you as opposed to everybody else being represented by Mr. Burke. Why is that? Well, look, counsel, I believe that Judge Goodman will stop. Let me finish, please. You've been talking. I have an objection. Yes, because I actually noticed the deposition with plaintiff's counsel. It is not your stage, counsel. You have one job. This isn't object a stage. To this form. is a deposition. It is object to form. I've asked nothing improper. No, I, in have, other, I have other remedies, and I can ask for protective yes, order. I'm going to terminate the deposition in three minutes. If you do this again, yes. we're done. Judge Goodman will take yes. it up, and we'll hear. You do what He's going to love this video. I guess so he's just going to be before Judge Goodman. You're going to have a good time with him. I, I, I promise you that right now, the way this video is playing, it is not me that is violating every rule. Well, Judge you Goodman have to make that, an objection be the judge of form. That. So I've asked him the question. I have an objection Why? to your, your harassing, intimidating, outrageous behavior. Okay. That's my objection. Thank you. Are you done now? I am done. Okay. Why? Why to what, sir? Why are you the only one being represented by... Uh, Lyman's a very good lawyer. I don't take anything against that. Why are you the only one being represented by Lyman and everybody else is represented by Mr. Burke? Objection. Sir. Argumentative calls for speculation. Join. You can answer. Sir, I was informed that I was being represented by Mr. Lyman Reynolds, and I don't know why. By whom were you informed? Uh, that's attorney-client privilege. If it's Counselor, attorney, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. My, my discussions with my client, uh, client as to my representation uh, agree, are inappropriate. Agree. Were you informed by anyone other than Lyman? I don't recall who informed me. Was it someone other than Lyman? Yes. And was it and someone other than Mr. Burke? I don't know. Was it someone within your police department? I don't know. When was it that you were informed? It hasn't been that long that you've been represented by Lyman. Within the past month, I'd say. But you, no recollection of with whom they were even affiliated or connected? No, Mr. Burke's office contacted me but I don't know who set that up okay are you concerned that your uh, uh, 
proverbial brothers or sister in, all, in blue will testify against you? No, you're sir. You're being represented by his, uh, your own counsel and they represented by their own? Objection, argumentative, and harassing. Yeah. No, sir. How about um, your Fifth Amendment? Are you going to be invoking any of your Fifth Amendment privileges today? Or you plan on testifying to every question asked? I plan on testifying. Um, despite uh, the, the fact that the city of Key West um, State Attorney's Office, in their infinite wisdom and abilities, could not get an indictment against uh, you or any of your fellow officers, you do realize you do have potential criminal exposure by the feds. Objection, argu actions. objection, argumentative, and harassing. Join. Do you realize that? No, sir, I did not. Um, you also still have potential, and always will have potential, exposure by both the federal government and the state government for any perjurious statements that you've made before today, and if you make any here today. Objection, argumentative, and harassing. Join. Yes, sir, I understand that. And despite those concerns you uh, or issues, you are going to be testifying fully without invoking the Fifth Amendment. Yes, sir. Were you given any immunity by any prosecuting agency for any type of uh, event or testimony that you have offered or will offer in this case? No, sir. Have you met with the FBI in this case? No, sir. Met with any assistant U.S. attorney? No, sir. Um, I do want to note on the record, incidentally, uh, Counsel um, Mike Burke, that it um, appears to me, and do correct me if I'm wrong, that the city and its production responses that were provided to us late, a day late when we agreed, but be that as it may, failed to provide any information or material responsive to our requests relative to Officer LeVay. Is that correct? I don't know, sir. Yeah, well, and I'm not here to answer your questions. If you have an issue about discovery, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take it up. Yeah, I'm reserving the right to have uh, bring up motions, as we all are, and also to seek uh, depositions again because the material explicitly excluded out, despite your representation of the city of Key West, any of the material regarding Officer LeVay, any material. It also did not include any training material or any policy material relative to use of force or any of the other types of related training and procedures that for years all the officers that we named in this lawsuit underwent. Not a single particular training program material was provided. Um, we'll have to take that up. I'm not aware of that. Uh, which if, you, if, you need to, if you need to continue the deposition, we'll be happy to do so if you'd like. No, we're going to take it because we're running out of time in the discovery proceeding, but you, you knew that. Um, what's your weight, Officer Levay? About 225, sir. Um, what's your height? About six feet. And is that the same height and weight that you were at the date of the incident when Mr. Imers was killed? About that, yes, sir. Have you done, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm stealing your water by accident. Um, have you yourself done any uh, reading or studying on uh, the mind of a psychopath? No, sir. Um, have you heard that um, recent literature uh, on the topic, comprehensively done, identifies that what used to be the theory that psychopaths don't experience or uh, empathy is actually not really what the, the exact dynamic it implicated is, but rather that psychopaths can turn their empathy on whenever they feel like it. Objection it's not a natural response. Have you heard any of that? Objection, argumentative, and harassing. Join. No, sir. And you've heard how when people, surely, tell me if, uh, if I'm, I'm incorrect here, that when people are alone or with friends and they don't think they're being videoed or audio taped, that they speak the truth? Objection. Form. I don't know. When you're alone or uh, with friends or loved ones, and there's no one around, there's no video camera, there's no audio camera. You don't believe, and recognizing you are under oath today, too, officer, that you are more apt to be honest and candid because those are the people with whom you have a trusting relationship? Objection, argumentative, and harassing. Join. Sir, it depends on the situation. Okay, with family, with your wife, with your uh, siblings, uh, parents. You're more or less likely to be telling the truth, being candid. Again, it depends on the situation. Oh, what 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 depends? Are you gonna? Do, is it something that you, with your f your wife and your family and your friends, that you you 
at times lie to them? Objection. Four. About, about, particularly about important stuff, like whether you killed a man. Objection. Four. Argumentative harassing. Yes. And for what purpose? You can answer. Embellishment. For what reason? Decompression. What does that mean? To decompress. Yeah, what does that mean? What are you decompressing? About dealing with situations. Mm -hmm. So every single statement that we on this side of the table, and we think any reasonable person is going to hear and think is a confession by you of your guilt and culpability in the death of Mr. Eimers, is just you're chalking up to decompression or exaggeration? Objection for form harassment. Yes. Every single one for that hour and a half plus. I wouldn't know about every single one. Well, we'll go over them. In that regard, you didn't know when the, you were making those statements that your late taser audio was recording the event, did you? No, I did not. Now, you were trained um, in the use of that particular taser, correct? Yes, sir. And you knew that when you activate it, it records audio and video footage, correct? Yes, sir. And you believe you activated it at the scene. We'll get to whether you discharged it or not later, but you activated it, correct? On the scene? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, and at what point did you think that you turned it off, the activation? As soon as I reholstered it. So it was your belief that you would have footage of the events until you holstered it of Imers' death? Yes, sir. But conveniently, we don't have that. Get to, form. Get to form. Cause for speculation on the part of the witness. Well, you've seen the footage. Do we have it? No, sir, I have not. You know that we don't have the footage from your taser, whether you've seen it or not. Isn't I that did correct? not know that. Objection form. Well, you know how long this footage tapes on your taser, do you not? You got trained. From, an, uh, from another event, I was told it was, what, an hour and 32 minutes it had recorded? Approximately. Okay. And that after it records for four hours, three hours, whatever amount after that hour and a half, everything that's the starting point beyond the hour and a half is now taped over. You I did not that? know that, no. Well, do you, what do you think happens that the first hour and a half records and then it stops recording? Sir, Objection form calls for speculation on the part of the witness. As soon as that incident was over, as soon as we got a chance that day, my taser was downloaded. I did not review that tape. No, but you did shoot it or t test fire it with your or your or somebody's dog later in the day. It was a test fire. I don't know if it was with the dog or not. Like and I said, I have not reviewed the video. And you're at that point when you did that, you didn't notice that it was recording? No, sir. Your intent in test firing it after that hour and some minutes was not a, oops, it's been activated this whole time and I'm going to test fire it so I can get rid of all that testimony? No, sir. All that video evidence? I didn't realize it would do that. Well, when you test fired it after that day, late in the day with the dog, did you, in fact, notice that it was still on activate? No. So the entire time you had the taser up to the point through downloading, you never knew it was still on activate? No, sir. What does it require to activate a taser? To turn it on. And how do you do that? By flipping a switch. And after you finished that day, you gave your taser to someone at the department? I was called to the station at some point throughout the day to download it. And what, how, tell us, walk us through how you actually did that. Did you take your taser out of your holster? and give it to a sergeant. And you never bothered to look at it or say, here it is? Did you take out the cartridge? I would take both cartridges off of it and hand it to him. But didn't notice, in incredibly enough, that it was had been activated, unactivated, or in what position it was in? No, sir. Objection form. I'm sorry. Um, just got a call from Judge Goodman. He will hear us in 10 minutes. I just need a, a defense counsel on the phone, and he's expecting the call back. Perfect. Okay. Can you handle that? With I you? can handle that. Thank you. Do you want to go off the record? Now? I think we should go off the 10 minutes. I think okay. we should. That's fine. I think we should okay.
off the video record at 9.23 a.m.